QuickBooks Online, sales by customer and income by customer reports. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in our online search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, selecting the option that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're gonna be picking the United States version of the software and verify that we're not a robot. Zooming in a bit by holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at the 125% on the zoom in. Noting in the cog drop down, we're currently in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. We'll try to toggle back and forth between the two views so you can see where stuff is located in each of them. Right click on the tab up top to duplicate it as we do every time. Right click in the duplicated tab to double duplicate. We're gonna be putting reports in these tabs. As the tab to the right is thinking, we're gonna to tab to the left. Reports on the left. We're gonna be opening up the balance sheet report as that's thinking, tab to the right reports on the left and then income statement profit and loss p l close the hamburger otherwise known as the ham boogie range to the change from 01 01 22 tab 12 31 22 tab run it to refresh it tab to the middle close the boogie scroll up ranges to change ins 01 01 22 tab 12 31 22 tab run it to refresh it that's the setup process that we do every time we're not going to be looking at uh, reports that are breaking out income statement line items remember basically all other reports in essence usually break out some added information about a line item or multiple line items of one of these two financial statements balance sheet income statement otherwise known as the p l profit and loss we're now focused on that PL profit and lost, looking mainly at the income line item. I'm gonna collapse it right now, the income. You'll recall that the major two sections of the income statement are income and expenses. Income minus expenses, giving us that net income. Income could also be called a revenue category. That's the increase in our revenues over a time frame. Now remember that most of the time when you put income accounts into the system, you're, you're not gonna be breaking out too many income accounts usually. You're gonna have very broad categories about what it is you do, possibly breaking out in a most generic type of fashion between your, your goods that you sell, if you sell inventory and service items. You might get a little bit more detailed. You might say, you know, this is a certain group of items that I sell on the inventory side or certain service types that I do. But normally you have very limited income account types because you're specializing in the type of thing you do and then you pay for whatever else you need. That's why there's a lot of expense categories as opposed to the income category side of things. What you need to be aware of and try not to do most of the time as a general rule is to create a bunch of income accounts that are tied to a customer. So you might say, hey, this is my favorite customer or a big customer of us. This is the income from Joe Smith. You don't typically want to do that in a full service accounting system because one, it'll make your income statements quite long. And two, you can typically get that added detail in the subsidiary reports, breaking out the information by customer, per, for example. So you don't wanna put it here on the face of the income statement. The other thing people typically do is break out too many categories in terms of what they sell, service items, inventory items. You don't wanna have every an income account for every different little item you sell. Uh, you know, because you'll end up with a whole lot of income statement accounts on the profit and loss again. And again, usually you can get that information from another report. Now, when I say usually, we got to point out the exception here. So if I hit the drop down, you'll recall 
we're looking at the income side of things now. So the income cycle, which you can think of as the customer cycle. And if you have a very simplified cycle, then you might not be using the forms that are the sales type forms. So let's go to the most complex to the simplest this time. If you, if you have a accrual system where you have to invoice the clients because you do the work before uh, you get paid, then you're going to have to invoice the client and then receive the payment. So the invoice form is the form that creates the sales line on the income statement. If you have a cash register, like a food truck, you get paid at the same point in time, you're on a cash based system, but you're still going to use the full service accounting system, entering the transaction with the sales receipt and then depositing it into the bank. However, if you have a very simplified kind of structure where you can basically have gig work, maybe you're getting paid by YouTube, you're getting paid by Amazon, you're getting paid by these other platforms or something like that, then you might just wait till it clears the bank, possibly using bank feeds, which will create a deposit form typically to record your income. If you're recording income that way, could be a perfectly fine way to do it because it'd be, be simplifying your system a lot, but the deposit form doesn't have the same capacities as the sales receipts and the invoice to create the sub ledger breaking out income by customer and by account. Therefore, if you're using that system, it's likely that you might have a bunch of income accounts basically named by the customer who's paying you. You might call it Amazon income, YouTube income, AdSense income, Google income, or whatever. And so we'll talk more about that kind of system when we get to the bank feeds uh, course or section at a later point. So just keep that kind of caveat in mind. If you're using invoices and sales receipts to record your revenue, then you probably want to have a limited amount of income accounts so that you can then you could then get the added detail if you need it with the sub ledger reports breaking out income by customer and by item. Let's look at those now. So I'm going to right click on the tab to the right and duplicate it. And we're going to go on down to the reports on the left hand side and I'm going to close up the hand boogie scroll down a little bit. So we've got the business overview report, who's those used. Here's the sales and customers. This is where you would think it would be. Now there's two reports that look quite similar that we wanna just point out. They can be a little bit confusing. You got the income by customer here. You got the uh, income by customer. And then you also have the sales by customer summary and sales by customer detail reports. You would think these are basically the same thing, but in essence, the, I believe the income report is the one over here that is actually kind of tying out the net income, income minus expenses. So if you sold cost of goods sold, they're going to apply the cost of goods sold, you know, to the customer that you purchase from. So it's kind of like tying out to gross profit in essence, as opposed to the items over here, which, which is the ones that first come to mind to me, which is breaking out the sales, the top line by income. So let's open up this one first. We'll go to the income by customer summary. Let's open that one up and check it out. I'm going to change the range up top from 010122, tab 123122, and run it to refresh it. And there we have it. We've got our we've got our customers on the left hand side. We've got the the income by customer. So if we scroll on down, that comes out to the uh, 102805. If I go back to my income statement and look at the income side that's not the income statement the income statements over here and the income 10 200 so it's pretty close not exact on it and notice oftentimes you might be a little bit off or it's more likely that there's going to be a difference between this income report and the sub ledgers over here because quickbooks doesn't force you to to use the system in such a way that the sub ledger will turn out uh, correct every time like it does with other accounts. So for example, if I go back to the first tab and I look at this balance sheet account of accounts receivable, you'll recall we found an accounts receivable aging report, which tied out exactly to this number. That will typically be the case because QuickBooks will not allow you typically record something to an accounts receivable account without assigning a customer in such a way that QuickBooks can then make the sub ledger uh, tie out to it. And that's quite nice because with this particular account, that's very important. Although it does cause problems, as we'll see when we're doing adjusting entries, when we don't really want that to be the case. The same is not the true 
not the same, or it's not the same if you go over to the income line items, meaning if you were to record something to income with a, with a journal entry or with a deposit form, as you might do if you were recording with the bank feeds, then you might not assign a customer in the same fashion that QuickBooks can then add it to the subledger. So that's why it's more likely that your income account will be off than your subledger. But if you're recording all of your income with the sales forms, invoices, and sales receipts and assigning a customer to it, it should be tied out. It should be correct. Also note, if there is a problem with this one, it's not as big an issue as it is if there's an issue on the balance sheet side of things with accounts receivable or accounts payable because these are temporary accounts. So at the end of the year, they're gonna close out and you'll start over again with a zero at the beginning. So if you, if you got out of whack somewhere, it'll reset itself at least on a yearly basis so you can get back in alignment and move forward from that point in time. Okay, so if I go back on over, then it gives us our expenses, which are typically gonna be the cost of goods sold here. Now, sometimes you might have a more complex kind of job cost system where, where it might be something different than that, but now it's got the expenses and then you've got the, the net income, which isn't, it's a little deceptive of a term because it doesn't tie out to the bottom line of net income, but this is the impact on net income of these transactions or gross profit in essence. So that 968341, you would think would tie out to basically gross profit in this case. I went to the wrong report again, which would be income minus the cost of goods sold. Or in other words, that 405, you would think would tie out to this number. It's a little off, it's a little different because of the, some of the issues we just talked about. So that's one of the two uh, kind of subledger reports. Notice how nicely you can you can create bar charts. You can imagine, and we will do in future presentations, to use this data to create like a pie chart of who your best customers are, who you sold to the most to, and that kind of stuff to kind of spice up your the vi visuals on your reporting, possibly for month end reporting and quarter end and year end. Let's go to the other one. I'm scrolling down into the reports again. We're on the sales reports. This time, let's look at the sales by customer. Let's just look at the uh, detail item. Sales by customer detail range into the change in from a 10122 tab, 123122 tab, run it. And so now we've got just, just the total column here broken out by customer the bottom line of it, we would think should tie out to what is on the income statement, 10, 280, and we're close, not quite on the profit and loss report. So there's that one, same, same kind of concept. You could take this data quite easily, export it to Excel, for example, which we'll probably do in a future presentation and make a pie chart out of it or make a bar chart that can give you some good visuals. So let's go back to our reports again and close up the hand boogie and scroll down one more time and did i did i skip it here i'm too zoomed in i can't see right it's too zoomed in so now we'll look at the sales by customer detail now note you also have this uh sales sales by uh, customer type and that would be applicable if you have you know customer types as as a category category section you can take a look at that but we're just gonna look at this one, sales by customer detail, sales by customer detail. So I'm sorry, this one's sales by customer type detail. I'm gonna go to this one, sales by customer detail. Let's pick that one up and change the range again from 010122 tab, 123122 tab, run it to refresh it. So now you've got the customer information and the actual activity uh, per customer. So this is a nice report that gives you the detail but this is one of those reports that you might not use quite as often because you might look for this kind of information over here if you're if you're trying to communicate with a particular customer on this side where you would be going into the sales the sales side of things which would be kind of like the customer center i'm going to close up the hamburger and if you went to the sales transactions then here's where you can sort those transactions and possibly sort by the invoices, for example, or you can sort by the sales receipts. So now we've got the sales receipts that we're sorting by, and we can also go to the customer side of things and we could sort by the open invoices and so on. So if I'm actually communicating with an invoice about the sales we made 
to an individual. We probably find the individual in here and then look at that, the detail that they have within it, as opposed to say running a report like this and then looking for, you know, the detail within the report was my thought process on that. But there is this one. Now, next time in future presentations, we can also imagine and we'll do again next time if I hit the, the arrow here or the hand boogie and then scroll back down these sales reports that are going to be by item by the things that we sell so we'll break those out uh next time so that'll be good times next time and let's just hit the ham boogie or i mean sorry the the uh the cog and switch to the business view just to see where stuff is located as we wrap things up and now we know the reports of course are in the business overview business overview and then the reports and then we know that th we've been in the get paid and pay area and we've been talking about the the in in the get paid area we talked about the invoices and we talked about the customers and then that sales area you got to remember if you're in this business view or talking to people that are in the business view is in the bookkeeping area transactions up top you got the sales stuff up top so you can sort in that area as well.